Hey everyone, in attempts to follow up my last video, in this video I'm going to be talking about my experience with IB chemistry. All I can say to people who are trying to figure out whether they want to take KHL chemistry is that you should really just try and make your own decision on this one and not listen too much to the rumors. Lots of people say that chemistry is super hard and it's by no means easy, but in my school no one had ever gotten above a 5 in chemistry, and so the general stereotype of chemistry was that it was impossible to do. I just decided to not believe in the hype and study really hard and I came out with a seven. Whilst IB chemistry is hard and you do have to put in a lot of work, like you do all of the subjects, it's definitely doable. And also I got a seven despite having done basically no science classes in my entire life. Like I had no experience in chemistry at all except for like basic atom structure and how to balance chemical equations but that's it. Like I didn't get a seven because I like had years of experience. Now like all of my chemistry learning and experience came from the beginning of IB to the end of IB onwards and that's it. This video may be a bit long so I'll leave some timestamps in the description below to split up the video. Skip around to the parts which you're interested in. So why did I take KHL chemistry in the first place? Was I trying to be a doctor? No. So the reason why I took HL chemistry honestly was because I had to. I originally wanted to do film HL as like my art option, but because I was planning to study sciences in university, it didn't really make sense not to do a second science rather than an art, which wouldn't have helped me for my application or whatever. And so my mom basically like forced slash encouraged me to do uh, HL chemistry, which in hindsight, I wish I had done film because in reality, I didn't actually need chemistry to go into my university. But I don't at all regret taking chemistry because I did actually really enjoy studying chemistry. So how did I do in chemistry? Uh, I just barely scraped a seven, like I was one point above the green boundary. And so if you're interested in marks, I got a seven in paper one with a 34 out of 40. I got a six in paper two with 61 out of 95. And I got a six in paper three with a 34 out of 45. And I got a seven in my IA, which was 21 out of 24. So I got two sevens and two sixes, and that averaged out to like a low seven. I'm pretty lucky in that sense, like it honestly could have gone either way. I could have gotten a six, like I could have gotten a seven, like I was just on like the luck side and just happened to get that seven. And all I can say about the subject of chemistry is that I felt like in that subject I learned the most about like self-discipline and self-guided learning because I felt like for the first year at least, I basically had to teach the entire subject to myself. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, we've changed location. So the first year of IB chemistry, I had this teacher, which God bless his heart, he's such a good dude, but man, I just could not learn anything from him. And that's a personal thing, I'm not blaming him either. Uh, just personally, based off how I feel I learn, I could not really learn anything from his classes. And that's because like chemistry for me, it's a really dense, complex subject, right? I accept that. Like you really have to spend a lot of time like really digging deep into the content to really understand it. And this teacher basically just, in comparison to my physics class, really dumbed down the subject and never focused on any of like the actual difficult stuff that's gonna come in the exam. Like the tests you would give us were so freaking easy that they were basically meaningless because you didn't have to study for them and that's not the reality of IB exams. You have to study for them otherwise you're gonna fail. Everyone was getting sixes and sevens without like doing much work and that just wasn't like realistic. Like I remember for one of the mock exams I didn't study like at all and I got like a 95% not because I'm smart but because the questions were so easy like I didn't even study and we also just did a bunch of like dumb stuff that like I felt like wasted a lot of time and I didn't really learn from them. In my opinion I would have much rather spent a lot of time delving into the content like we were doing in physics like really trying to understand like what this equation means and stuff. Like I remember for one of the classes, he was like, all right guys, for this class, you're gonna make a short play on something to do from chemical kinetics. And I was like, is this drama class? Because I feel freaking ridiculous, like bouncing up and down, pretending to be a hydrogen atom that's about to react with my friend Felicia, who's pretending to be an oxygen atom. Like, why are we doing this? Like his way of explaining stuff is just way too anecdotal to the point where it didn't really make sense. Like, it was like, superficial rather than like 
deep scientific like knowledge and discussion. Like he'd be like trying to explain complex molecules, right? And he'd be like, right guys, a complex molecule is not that difficult. It's actually super simple. A complex molecule is basically a molecule, right? It's got eight hands, all right? And when the light comes in, the hands eat that light and then spit out a new light. Got it, right? Yeah, see, not that hard. And also all of the practical apps that we did were just a meme where we like didn't really learn anything. We just light stuff on fire and be like, huh, cool. Bunsen burners, am I right? And we also move so slow. Like, if you've seen Richard Thornley, it would take us like 50 minutes to get through content in which Richard Thornley could like explain simply in like three minutes and I'd like get it. But to be fair, he was good one-on-one. -on -one. Like in the classroom, I was just like, oh my god, I don't want to leave. But then like one-on-one, -on -one, if I went to talk to him, he wasn't as bad. And it was also just a good dude, so I don't hate on him. I just like couldn't learn from his classes. In order to deal with this, basically just in first year, I just did my best to basically just learn all of the content myself. There was another chemistry teacher in the school who I went to all the time like i'd always be knocking on a door like hello i have questions for you i didn't understand anything we talked about in the last class answer them for me please i did a lot of self-study at home just to keep up with it all because i knew i couldn't just like do it all in the, the second year and like all of my learning basically just consists of like trying to understand the content using richard thornley videos and then doing a bunch of practice papers if I didn't get something, I wouldn't cry about it. I would just go to my like other chemistry teacher and just hassle her until she gave me the answers. I think a lot of people just kind of like gave up and lost hope. You don't need to give up. You don't need to let like one teacher's poor teaching be the death of you. If you really want it, you can get it. You just gotta put in that extra effort. Prove to yourself that you can do it without them. And when you succeed later on because you've decided, hey, I don't care if you're useless, I'm gonna do this anyways and I'm gonna be successful regardless. You're gonna feel so much more proud of yourself for doing that more than you were for the other classes. I liked physics more, but I'm more proud of my chemistry grade because I felt like I did that completely on my own. Whilst my physics grade and my history grade and my English grade, I felt like I had like a lot of support from my teachers, which is fine to have support from your teachers. But that chemistry grade, I just like, like, I'm so proud of myself because I didn't have teaching first year, basically. <laughs> Despite how frustrating it was to be in that class, I did really enjoy studying HL chemistry. I just found it personally interesting. Like, freaking molecules and atoms, the periodic table, it's just like my stuff, I love it. And I also like chemistry because it's like a nice mix between content and math, in my opinion. Like, I feel like physics is just a lot of math, and then bio is just like a shit ton of content, and then chemistry is like a nice mix of the both. And chemistry is just like so clever when you like really start to understand it. Like, it's basically just like this set of like relatively simple rules that allow you to make like an absurd amount of predictions about chemical reactions in the real world. Like, it's really quite amazing like what chemistry can do. And in addition, I felt like doing chem was really helpful because it went really nicely with physics. Like when we got to the atomic physics unit, I felt like having done chemistry just made this topic like a lot more interesting and like easier to understand because atomic physics is basically just like the foundation of chemistry. And having done like a year of chemistry, I felt like the two worlds were colliding and stuff. It was just fun because we had done all this chemistry, but then in atomic physics, we got to learn like the background knowledge of where all of those like somewhat anecdotal chemistry knowledge stands on. When year two of IB chemistry came around, things got a lot better because my old teacher had actually gotten fired or I don't know if he was fired or if he just left and he was replaced by the chemistry teacher that I had been going to seek help from. And this is like the best thing that could have ever happened because this new teacher was so freaking helpful and supportive of us but she also was like hard on us like when we first walked into the class she straight up hit us with the hard truth like she sat us all down and was like right guys i know you all think you've been working at the six to seven range because that's how you guys have been scoring on your tests and i don't want any of you to be fooled to think that you are really working in the six to seven range because i've seen the tests that your last teacher gave you and those in no way reflect like how hard the real chemistry exam is the real chemistry exam is a lot more difficult, there's a lot more content, and you guys are really gonna have to pick up your game if you really wanna get those six to seven marks in the actual IB exams. In addition, she like gratefully reminded us that we were like far behind and we still had like a lot of content that we needed to catch up on in order to uh, be able to, um, in order to be able to finish the content by the end of the year uh, before the exams rolled around. 
Now this was hard to hear, but it was what we all needed to hear, so I was really grateful she did that. And so yeah, with these new classes, like we were just moving at lightning speed. We were looking at one thing after another after another because we needed to do that in order to finish the actual content. Another great thing about like being with my new teacher is that we got like a lot of past paper practice. Like we did just so many like past papers in the classroom and those like really helped prepare us for the exam. And I remember sometimes our teacher would even like stay with us after school to allow us to do like a past paper and like doing those past papers like over and over again first starting off at like getting like a four and then slowly building up to like a five a six a seven as i just kept doing more and more of them i just learned the most there for the exams because chemistry like a lot of other subjects you can see the trends in the past papers and you can immediately figure out what you need to know based off like the old past papers yeah so like when i was getting like 55% on like my chemistry exams. I wasn't upset by that. I was like grateful that that like exam pointed out uh, the gaps in my knowledge which I could then go fill before the real exam. Like I spent so much time with my teacher just discussing concepts with her and asking her questions and like trying to figure out what was going on. She was really helpful with that. In second year I had also just bought an iPad and I feel like honestly this thing, this thing was a freaking game changer for me. Like I would just spend hours and hours just laying on my couch doing past papers because it was just so easy. Doing past papers on the iPad absolutely changed the game. Chemistry was a lot more fun uh, than physics for me socially because in physics I didn't have any like study buddies to work with. In chemistry I had lots of friends in my chemistry class and so I would go to my friend's house and we would all like study together and like work on past papers together and it was just like a really nice like social vibe. But we weren't like insecure and like trying to beat one another and trying to one-up each other. It was like we were all like working together to like fight against this thing which is IB chemistry. One of the things that I felt like I did which was really helpful was that I kept a booklet of all of the polyatomic ions that you needed to know and that came up regularly. I think one of the issues with chemistry is that like there's a lot of new language that you have to learn and like there's a lot of like compounds that you have to know. So whilst I was doing past papers and I was like oh phosphate I probably have to know that's PO43 minus I'm gonna write it down. So I just collected all of the ones I needed to know and like drew diagrams about them and wrote about them. So this is my phosphate carbonate ions, dichromate, permanganate, hydrogen cyanide. I felt like just keeping them all in a, a booklet that I was working on over time was like really helpful. Honestly, I would really recommend learning the periodic table song. It just lets you become more familiar with the vocab of chemistry. Knowing what all of the elements are is quite helpful whilst doing IB chemistry because it makes everything feel less daunting because you already know the words and the vocab. So how did I find the IA? Well, the IA was honestly the place where I struggled with the most for IB chemistry. Like, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I have a whole video about it. You can check it out here. But basically, because we didn't learn any chemistry skills from my first teacher, doing the chemistry IA was so difficult because I was doing basically everything for the first time. Like, I didn't have any, like, background knowledge on how to do laboratory skills. And in addition to that, all of my chemistry IA attempts just kept failing for some reason. Like I did a Winkler experiment, I, I did an experiment on buffers, and it was only after the third time in which I did an experiment on electrolysis that I was finally able to do my IA. And this was mainly because electrolysis has a lot to do with electricity concepts which are derived from physics, so it was like easier for me because I knew a lot about Faraday's laws of electrolysis from having studied physics. So my chemistry IA was just kind of like a physics IA pretending to be a chemistry IA, I think. And now when it comes to the option, I actually ended up studying a different one to the rest of my class. My teacher was used to teaching the medicinal chemistry option because most of the kids who were taking chemistry were also biologists who wanted to do something in medicine. But honestly, I was not interested at all in studying medicine and I was just like, wasn't interested in doing the option D. And at the time I had like plans to maybe study environmental science in the future. And so naturally I wanted to do the energy option for chemistry. And so I actually ended up studying option C, like self-studying it. And this is a great choice for me for a few reasons because in physics we do this topic called energy production and a lot of the concepts and like content from energy production is what is taught in the option C for chemistry. So I feel like doing option C is really good for physicists. Doing option D or doing option B is pretty, pretty good for biologists. I don't know who would do materials, like, I don't know. Like the equations of specific energy and energy density I had already known from physics and the option which looks at nuclear chemistry and like nuclear energy and stuff like that 
I had already understood a lot of the concepts like alpha and beta particles from, from the atomic physics chapter. And so yeah, I ended up studying option C for the exams. And whilst a lot of the content in option C I did find it personally interesting, there were some parts that I really struggled with and because I didn't have a teacher to help me out with them, it made it a lot harder. Some things that like I just couldn't give a shit about. It took me a while to fully appreciate that sense of size dies as I just ignored it for so long because I was just like, what is this? Now, whilst there was some benefit to doing another option, I honestly wouldn't recommend it unless you have a lot of like self-discipline because the options, they're quite dense. There's like quite a lot of material in them and you have to be like really self-disciplined to be able to like actually go through it all. Like I didn't have anyone to push me to like work on it and I didn't have anyone to go to to ask questions to and I felt like like I was disadvantaged in that sense. In the end, I still got a six. Maybe I would have gotten a seven if I had done medicinal chemistry, who knows? But in fairness, I'm still glad like I studied uh, the energy option for option C because I feel like that was just like valuable, like interesting information to like know about. So how were the exams for me? Well, when it finally came down, I felt like I was pretty prepared because I had done so much work on them. If you want to see like my reactions to the exams, you can watch my vlog series. I honestly didn't find them that bad. The main difficulty in doing IV chemistry exams was the fact that I had to do them right after my history paper three exams, which for the record is like a two and a half hour long essay writing exam where basically for two and a half hours, you write three essays. It's like the worst exam ever. And so on that day, I had a total of five and a half hours of exam and like by the time I got to the last exam which is paper 2 chemistry I was honestly so exhausted it was so hard for me to get through that one because I had just done like three hours of exams probably why I only got six for that one too in the end like I work so hard for chemistry and I'm like so grateful to have just scraped a seven and all I can say is to those who are like trying to figure out chemistry is that at the start a lot of it doesn't make sense you really have to have a lot of patience and like determination and consistency to have it all make sense because in the end, once you've done all of the topics and you've done like past papers and you've looked at it from afar, you can see how like the whole field of chemistry is really connected. And if you do physics, you can see how like the physics is related to chemistry. And it's honestly just like so amazing. Like it's just great. Like I love science. Science is so cool that way. Key resources. I could have not have done it without these key resources. Richard Thornley, MSJ Cam, and Andrew Wang, they helped me so much because they have some great content. Uh, for IB chemistry so I would highly recommend checking those out and yeah that brings us to the end of this video if you have any questions please feel free to DM me on Instagram with any of your questions or concerns I love talking to you guys about like your IB experience and stuff like that feel free to leave a comment for any questions that you have and please like and subscribe that's all for this video I'll see you guys in the next video bye